Recently, I've been teaching myself how to draw, and while that's still very much a work in progress, as I was learning how people sketch things, I couldn't help but think, I'm pretty sure I could teach a computer how to do this, and I know that it would be fun to try. Now, before I get into things, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. This past weekend, I took Ryan Booth's DIY cinematography class, where he teaches how to take cinematic shots, beautiful, stunning shots, without the need for expansive cinematic equipment or a whole crew or years of directorial experience. So it was a really beneficial thing for me as someone who loves making videos, because I'm always looking to step my game up. And Skillshare is like that for many of my passions and many of my curiosities and the, the creative things that I do. It's a cool place because you can learn from people who are truly some of the best in the world at what they do, and they're teaching you their craft. It's pretty special. Now, Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first thousand people who click the link in my description to help explore their creativity. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. Now, how do you teach a computer how to draw? Well, my theory was this. If we take a photo and we process it using some pretty common computer vision techniques, and then we combine those processes in a stylized way, we'll be able to kind of replicate what many artists are doing, subconsciously and consciously, as they sketch what they see. That was at least the theory. I thought that I could maybe make a computer do a line drawing. So what I mean by this is, imagine you're, you're given a picture and someone asks you to sketch it, right? The first thing that many people would start to do is they'd start outlining the major kind of figures, if there's a person, the major objects in the image. But have you ever really considered how your brain knows where to draw those lines? Like, it's a bit of a weird question. It kind of just knows. But if you start to think about it, what you start to realize is that your brain is seeing kind of continuous blobs of color. And then when it comes up against other continuous blobs of color, there's a border in between. And when you're sketching with a pencil, you draw a line there to represent that border. Right? It's not like there's an actual line there, but we kind of understand that that line represents this border between objects and we differentiate between them visually as such. And the thing is, we can do the same thing with computer vision, with processing a photo. And the way that we do this, there's an algorithm called canny edge detection. The way that this algorithm works is basically this. First, it smooths out the image to get rid of any noise because that'll mess with later steps. And then what it does is it goes through and it uses what are called Sobel or Sobel, I, I don't know, S-O-B-E-L filters to find edges. And if you know any linear algebra, you'll see, you know, this is just a pretty standard three by three matrix. You've got either a row of zeros or, or a column of zeros. Uh, and then on one side is positive, on one side is negative. So if you're at a continuous area, it's basically going to be zero. You're going to get nothing. But if you're at an area where the edge falls down those zeros, on one side, you're gonna get something positive. On the other side, you're gonna get something different and you'll get a non-zero number. And so what this really means is by moving these matrices around the image, you can find edges uh, oriented in different directions. Now, this might seem a little bit confusing to you if you're not familiar with linear algebra. That's okay. You do not need to be familiar with linear algebra to understand this. Basically, all that you need to understand from that is that there's a mathematical process for determining where in an image lines are. But lines are not the same thing as edges, right? Because, you know, there's, there's plenty of lines on something, but an edge is a really significant line. And so essentially, what the, what the canny edge detection algorithm does is it goes through, and based on some thresholds that you give it, it filters through all these lines, and it figures out which ones are likely to be edges based on how strong they are. Now, if that still doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. It will make sense as soon as you see it in action. So what I've done here is I've taken a photo just from my Instagram and I've passed it into this algorithm with different thresholds. So it starts with a really low threshold, so a lot of lines are considered edges, but then you'll see these details kind of go away until you really get the major lines, the major edges in the image. It's kind of like an outline, it's kind of cool. So at first I thought maybe I could just combine these images and you know the most significant edges uh, would be the darkest and then the lightest would be the least significant and that might look cool as it turns out it, it didn't look that cool it looked like this I didn't have a nose I it, it just looked weird it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't good I didn't I wasn't happy with it so the next thing that I tried doing was dilating the lines 
so this just makes them thicker, and I thought this gave it a really cool kind of stylized impression, but uh, it only really worked on the outside of the image and on my clothes. It didn't work for my face at all. It didn't work for details at all. It kind of gave me hope though. It kind of gave me a sense of what I was looking for. It, I realized what I was looking for was more analogous to like a charcoal sketch than a pencil sketch, right? I wanted dark, solid lines, not these kind of light little lines in between. So I decided to, to go with that and run with it. Now online, I'd seen this, this free code camp article by Rishav Agarwal who basically found a, found a really simple way of, of applying a cool effect which, which turns a photo into what looks a bit like a pencil sketch. And, you know, the way, the way that, that he did it was he turned the photo grayscale, uh, and then he inverted the photo, he blurred that, uh, and then he took, took the results and he uh, did a color dodge with that onto the original grayscale image. You don't necessarily need to understand that entire process. Uh, if you're familiar with image processing, that'll be kind of, you know, it'll make sense to you, those words. But the result is, it looks kind of like this with my image. So I thought, you know, that's cool, but it, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this this kind of charcoal sketch, not these this pencil line, the, the thin lines in the middle. I wanted really, really dark defined lines. And so what I ended up doing to, to achieve this was applying a process uh, called binary thresholding, which essentially what you do with binary thresholding is you're taking a grayscale image where you have many shades of gray, and you're choosing one of those shades of gray, and you're saying, okay, for every shade lighter than that, turn it white, and for every shade darker than that, turn it black. And so you get this only black and only white image in the end, so you get these really defined lines, um, and you get, you know, no light gray or anything like that. And I thought that the result after doing this and, and playing with that threshold value looked really good. So what I did next was I combined these two pieces. I took this sketch, the kind of charcoal sketch, if you will, and the edges, the thick edges with, with not very much detail, just the outline, and I put the edges on top of the sketch. And so you get this kind of stylized effect where uh, around the, the border of my head and on certain parts of my jacket, you get these thick, dark lines, but you still have dark lines showing off the details of my face. I think it, I think it looks really cool, and I was really pleased with this result. It was almost done. But of course, it wasn't done. I didn't want to just leave it on a white background. Um, there were a couple things that I played with to kind of put in the background. So the first thing that I tried doing was I tried making paper, like this kind of generated paper texture. The way that I did this was uh, through using what's called Perlin noise, which is a, a pretty cool technique for generating noise. Um, you can do it in 2D, 3D, but it makes this kind of like smooth pattern. You use it for clouds a lot uh, in games. And so I did this and, and I made a kind of paper-like texture but as I was playing with that, I started to realize that, you know, what was really cool about about this piece was that it looked very similar to like an Andy Warhol, you know, like a Marilyn Monroe with these dark lines. And what Warhol did is he inked behind portions of these lines to make it have this really cool pop art effect. And I wanted to do that. So what I did was I took my image, I, I took out the white background and I just kept it transparent and I threw it into Photoshop. And I just played around with inking underneath certain portions, just kind of coloring it in. And this was the final result. And I was super pleased with what came out. I think it looks really cool. So in a sense, I did teach a computer how to draw. You know, it's not, it's not drawing as you and I might draw, but it is thinking in many of the same ways. It's looking for significant edges and it's taking details and emphasizing them. I think it's kind of a fascinating process. Now, if you want to play with this code and you want to generate your own images and play with them, all the code is on my GitHub. It's linked in the description. Feel free to download. Feel free to play. I'd love to see what you make. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe. I'm John Fish, and I'll see you next time.